करके बोल दे बैठ जा तू पा Deep retractor with a, a curvature which can be adjusted, and a hook used for retracting deeper structures. Like if you are retracting the muscles, organs, or uh, liver. I mean, you can also retract bladder with it. It's a multi-purpose. Have you used it? Your answer should be yes. In which surgery you have most commonly used it? In which surgery have you used it most commonly? Most laparotomies are in the middle of the night, trying to repair injuries. So laparotomies, then they'll ask you for what all you've done the laparotomies. Remember, instruments, specimens, and X-rays are relevant only for those who are at the fag end of their exam and they have not done too well. So the examiner is trying to find some reason to learn something out of it by identifying an, uh, an instrument. You are not getting any mark. Everybody can identify a Deaver's retractor by this time. So they'll ask you what did you do? Tell or uh, talk about the last surgery that you did. Okay, and you'd say I was involved in a splenectomy or repair of a diaphragmatic injury or uh, colonic injury or whatever. So that would that would. The use, but the idea is it's a it's a deep retractor. That's the idea. Deepers, very similar, but it's malleable. So what you can do is you can give it a shape you want. You can give it an angle you want. You can actually make it straighter also. You can make it obtuse, acute, curved. You see, some people also use it for keeping the bowel out. During APR, by putting it this way, they keep the bowel away. But it's usually with a wrap of uh, gauze or cotton or something, so that you don't hurt. But this can keep the bowel in the upper part. Clear? Malleable retractor. Now you, this end can be used for hooking. This end can be used for holding. Whichever end you want. Depending upon if you want a deep retraction, you can hold this way. If you want a superficial retraction, you can hold it this way. So no, no big deal about it. Malleable metallic retractor. And the advantage of it being malleable is you can give it a shape of a divers. You can actually make a divers out of this. You can make a, a leg and back out of this. You can also make a Morris out of this. It's it's a malleable retractor, but I have used it, and I'm I'm just trying to sh share with you that both ends are broad, and you can actually put the bowel up during pelvic surgery, especially APR, and it works very well because it fits into the abdominal wall slightly bigger. You go side way, there's no space for bowel to sneak through. Now the advantage of one broad side, the other narrow side is depends where you want to use it. So it gives you that advantage also. So malleable metallic retractor. They are very similar, but this is broader than this, and it's got a curvature. Here. This is for a function. Langenbeck. Did the first cholecystectomy. It comes with that automatically. Now Langenberg, when doing the first cholecystectomy, used it for retracting the part of liver which is where the bladder is, the gallbladder is, or the what you call as the plate. He would retract it, but he was constantly finding that it is not enough. So what will happen with the retraction? The liver would keep falling like this. 
the part here, part here. So it did provide the space that it needed. Plus, it was narrow. So it could enter into the liver. Clear? Yes. Langenbeck's retractor. Now what is this hook for in all these retractors? This is to prevent it from slipping. You must have seen most people when they are retracting, they tend to keep it flat, which is the wrong way to retract. It should be hooked. The advantage of hooking is you stay out of the area and number two, you are able to get some space to work. Now if you stay out of the area, the surgeon is able to, the person who is operating is able to see more. Against this background, his registrar Morris modified it, made it broader. If you look at it, it looks like a cousin brother who is eaten a little more. Broader. But there is a curvature here. Now this curvature allows for negotiation of the structure, the right angle or scissors. This doesn't. And this being broader, I am sorry, I was telling about this hook first. So you retract it, it doesn't slip away. If you are hooking, it won't slip away. If it was flat, and if you are hooking, it will injure. The other thing was, you could keep a piece of gauze here and make it completely atraumatic and retract the lever. And if you look at it from that point of view, Morris becomes even smarter. Broad, so the entire thing is taken away. You are, you got actually, you know, if you watch it carefully, the gallbladder is here. I have retracted a liver away. Everything is very clearly visible. And mind this curvature. This allows you a complete look at the common bile duct, the part which is above the insertion of cystic duct. And the hook doubles up as something which will not slip and secondly you can put a pad. I tell you my uh, uh, my uh, guide was invariably asking us to put a pad here. It was a routine which also became the most important cause of gauze is being left inside and so it was abandoned. Liver was never retracted without a pad which still is done. So these days we do it with a you know you wrap either a abdominal swab or something but it is a space for that. If somebody is asking you that question, you should know this answer. If he is not asking, don't worry. And on that day, don't try to give an answer which is not asked. Clear? Now the pad fits in here nicely. Which protects the liver. And this hook allows it to stay. And the hook also allows you to take the liver out of the house. This is Morris and Langenbeck's. Morris is used for retracting the moderate kind of depths, but especially liver, rectus muscle, abdominal wall muscles. Now the back side, it has got the grip, which are fenestrations, broad ones. You can hold it like this. That is why the grip is. And what is this hole for? To make it lighter, which is the primary job. Don't say it's for the finger to be put inside. It's a wrong answer but very commonly given answer. If a surgeon needs a finger to be inside a Morris to be able to retract it, he should not do surgery. It is not needed. You shouldn't get tired of holding it. This is the grip. Clear? Morris retract. Used for retracting liver, abdominal wall, deep structures, etc. Clear? Langenbeck's See the fenestrations have changed position. It is flattened. Because you don't need to apply so much of force. You just can hold it comfortably. Same function. You've seen it being used in retracting various superficial structures. It can't be retracting very deep structures. Journey spelt with C. And the hole inside is to make it lighter again. Don't give that answer. This is not good enough for finger. Just try to put your finger inside it. It's a wrong answer. Don't put a finger inside it. It's to make the instrument lighter. That's it. Okay. Now, why have two hooks here and a flat blade here? Again to make it lighter and to have a variety. Now, 
this hole, this space allows for the needle to be seen as it comes out, especially when you are closing the rectus sheath, when you are doing the mass closure. Mass closure is done with a Jenkins technique, J-A-N-K-I-N apostrophe S, which you all do. What is Jenkins technique? Yes. Jenkins. Okay. Continuous single layer portion of the abdominal wall. Anybody? Sir, so, suture should be, uh, sir, so there are two aspects to it. Suture so, should be um, uh, at least four times the length of the uh, incision. Very good. First of all, the length of the suture should be four times the length of the incision. Next. Uh, sir, uh, the uh, bite should be taken one centimeter uh, away one and not more than one centimeter from the previous bite. So, one inch to one. Third. Uh, sir, the uh, gap between the two subsequent bites should be. Uh, I have already told you one into one centimeter. You are repeating. The first bite is the crucial bite. Now watch this here, rather than writing. This is the head end. This is the tail end. I am retracting the rectus sheath, this, this entire stuff. The rectus sheath is the only thing left here. My first bite it inside out, outside in, at least one centimeter away and away from the last bite, the corner. I can't see the corner unless I have this. That is why it was devised. I am taking the needle inside out here, I will come outside in here, so I need to see the needle there for this space. If I put it this way, watch it, once the needle is gone inside, I can't see, I won't be able to rotate, but with this I can. So I actually can take a bite beyond the incision. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Now, the needle would, this is a needle needle would come out here. I will be able to see needle out, needle will enter here and come out here. I will be able to see. That is why this. So the advantage of two blades, <coughs> two hooks and one blade is, ye routine wala hai. again a curvature so that it doesn't slip away. Retraction means pulling and hooking. Pulling and okay. pulling and hooking. Okay. Now comes the space in between. It is to make it lighter. No confusion. Journey is done. This is the lung retractor. Don't bother about the name. Now look at its appearance. It has got a grip. You can't slip away. But look here, it's very cleverly made. It goes up, down, and when you retract the lung, you will be able to see still. Can you understand? This is used in thoracotomy when you are trying to reach the esophagus. Thoracotomy usually is right posterior lateral and as you go through the all the layers and you open the pleura, you go for the azygous vein, isn't it? Now when you are going for the azygous vein, this retractor is very handy. It has three major advantages. One is its location being, this is obtuse, this is acute. So what that does is, I have retracted the lung now and I am able to see clearly, nothing blocks me. Secondly, this is light because of these wires and this mesh allows the air filled lung to expand in space. If it is flat over, it will be traumatic. So air filled bag, you want to puncture, don't want to puncture it. Clear? The grip is the key. You hold it in such a way that your hand doesn't go away turn slippery. But retract it, you are able to see clearly. Is that okay? Now this is a lung retractor, that's all you need to know. Handle is strong, 
this is delicate and this meshing is to allow for lung to expand which is air filled bag and for you to see through it because I can actually see much better if the angle is up to you. If it's a flat, I don't see it. Clear? Can I move? Yes, sir. This is Joel's. And Joel is not Jules. It is J-O-L-L, apostrophe S. What is Joel's triangle? Joel's triangle is when you see the external thyroid vein, it the moral of the story is, whenever you read a comic book, read it thoroughly, so that you don't change a hero into a villain or a villain into a hero. You read it, I know from where, but read it well. I've given it in my own book and also in the Ten Commandments. Pulling the lobe down and out, down and out, can't be in and listen to me. This is down and out, you open up the angle, which is a space of reefs. And this triangle, one side is airway, other side is pole and the artery. This is called Joel's triangle. Joel's triangle contains external laryngeal nerve, not external jugular vein. And there is no external thyroid vein. Internal laryngeal nerve supplies what? Both are branches of which is a branch of given at what level? Nikhil? It's exactly a centimeter above where the superior thyroid artery comes out of external thyroid. And if you're not careful there, you can damage it when you're dealing with neck dissection. Any of you How many you lean in one case? Two. What is the limitation? Space. Joules. Okay. Now, you would say mastoid retractor, which should be a wrong answer because you don't have any reason to have a mastoid retractor in your kitty. This is a self retaining cat's paw. It's a cat's paw, but it is self retaining, which doubles up as mastoid retractor. Because why should you have a mastoid retractor? And it is self-retaining on account of this lever. Yeah. Here. This lever. So as you if you want to make it function, used for superficial surgeries when you're alone. It gets rid of one one assistant. So self-retaining cat spa or mastoid retractor. Don't know na, so that you're safe. But superficial fascia muscle retraction. Some people, if you watch some videos, they, you've seen thyroidectomy also, they use it. The flaps they rotate, but that's a bigger one. I've seen one more which similar, this thing, which is a spring action. As it goes away. So that keeps the flaps quite far. It's very nice retractor. We use a rubber sling to retract the flaps and we find that that's very effective. Or the less flap it even. Clear? So, self retaining cat spa or mastoid retractor used for retracting superficial structures and you can do without an assistant. Now, this one. Who is going to answer? Yes, Gopal. Why it is not a rib retractor? It's not a rib retractor. So let's look at something where you have to go into the cavity that deep. It's a self retaining bladder retractor. Used in the past for prostatectomy. 
लिम्स होती है ओपन यूज होता है ना ऐसे खींच के करते वॉट यू मेड एन इंसिशन इन द ब्लैडर हाउ डू यू रिकोगनाइज ब्लैडर ही लास्ट के डिस्कशन दस एम आस के लिए वेन यू डूइंग सिस्टास्टमी सिस्टोलिथाटमी और प्रोस्टिटमी यू डू यू मेक एन इंसिशन इन द मिड लाइन देन यू रिफ्लेक्ट द पेरिटोन यू डोंट यू सो हाउ डू यू रिकोगनाइज द ब्लैडर एज कम You are the first. Are you answering? You are not answering. So, okay, Deepak. Yeah, there is superficial veins. One is veins. The bunch of plexus of the veins. It is vesicle plexus of the veins. Transverse ridges of the muscle is visible. Very good. Transverse ridges of muscle are visible. Third. Third is you put in a needle and aspirate your. Don't put a knife before you've done these three. Clear? Now. After you made the incision in the bladder, watch it. What I'm showing, this end is towards the pubis. This is how the opening is. Not this way. It's a favorite question of old examiners. ये head end है, ये foot end है. It's the wrong way to put it. This is the right way to put it. All retractors which are self-retaining and are taking care of pelvis, this should go down where you're not going to see it. You should only see the bladder. Now, once you retract, once you now this is this is the head end, or oh, sorry, the foot end. Now it is retracted, and the bladder is all visible to me. I will see the orifice. I look for the <coughs> trigon, and I can actually do the bladder neck release also by making an incision under vision, or I can actually go for prostatectomy. So this is a some people call it Millen's. self retaining bladder retractor but i am calling it simple self retaining bladder retractor theek hai this cannot be for the ribs you don't need such a deep one anybody with doubt you don't see it these days that's why there is a doubt this can be one assembly or it can be separate now what is it <coughs> Along with doy insert comes, which needs to be fitted into this, and you can actually use it for retracting the bladder. Even in hysterectomy, the same purpose. Basically, use it for retracting the bladder. And uh, the whole assembly is very effective. and you can actually do without one assistant definitely the bladder goes down again you would have seen that we put it wrongly in the abdomen it comes on the chest wall but actually it should not be in the field where you are working that's the whole idea chest wall retractor be ka aur kya hai so sare par if it is given individually to you some people call it doins we don't need doins so you can call it a part of the self retaining well force where you are retracting the bladder with this here yeah. this is an individual cat spaw you saw a self retaining this is an individual cat spaw which is used for retracting soft tissue fascia superficial This is not a retractor used. I mean, wrongly used a single hook. It is not single hook retractor. It's a skin hook, which doubles up as a nerve hook or as a vascular hook. What will be the vascular use of this uh, bandhi? What did I say? Now hook, skin hook, vascular hook. यहाँ पे एक slit है इसमें. This is for the grip, so that you stay away from the field. It is used for harvesting the four O five O sutures and keeping them all on the hook. You take a bite, 
putting it on the hook so you can pull it at the end they all of them are on this and they fan out like this actually when you hold it and you release one pull one release one pull one release one pull one so this is used for vascular surgery also it doubles up as a nerve hook you can retract a nerve also with this but not used anymore why because the angulation because it's a very thin thing i use vein hook for retracting a nerve kyun hai deepak vein hook use karte hain hum retract ke liye so karan yahi hai broad so it won't cause neuropraxia angulation injury with this there is a angulation but suture can be taken you see you are getting a i mean if you getting all those sutures in the depth lots of vascular sutures in the depth we can use it for harvesting one by one and actually it's very it's a very smart way to take multiple sutures but they kept loose on this and you can actually take one out and make sure that you are able to close it adequately the leaks are taken care in vascular repair then nerve hook and also skin hook aur kuch nikal le nikal le नहीं है ना कुछ भाग चले दिस द मोमेंट यू लुक एट इट दिस इज द डेथ फॉर द चेस्ट सो इट हैज टू डू विद रिप्स इट्स शेप अपियरेंस एवरीथिंग इट इज टू ब्रिंग देम टुगेदर इफ यू रिवर्स इट इट्स इट कैन टेक देम अवे आल्सो बट टू ब्रिंग देम टुगेदर फॉर closing approximation so rib approximator you getting it after thoracotomy if the rib is missing you bring the other ribs together so that you can then put steel wire or proline or whatever you see now this is how it works and the curvature allows for the rib to fit in both sides so you can actually cover up a defect of up to two ribs comfortably Rib approximator. If I reverse it, it will be a rib spreader. No other hook will tell you that it will go the other way. Clear? Yes. Used for closing a thoracotomy by bringing <coughs> the ribs together. What? Retractable. No, it is not retractable. Retractors are done. Line. Double hook. This has a space for finger. Retracting the superficial surfaces, skin, tendons, fascia, but tough structures because it's going to hurt, and it's been made lighter by giving slits in the center. This is a rib respiratory, and it has serrations on both the sides. Can you watch this? which means the grip you are supposed to hold it here the which side respiratory is this that's it hold it in your right hand hold it in any hand this tip has to look at you presently it is looking at nikhil left side you should see the tip Rib respiratory is a kind of a periosteum elevator for the rib because you can't go around the rib. This goes around the rib. So how do you introduce it? This is the rib. You will create some space subperiosteally. You see, the safest approach in bone is to go under the periosteum because there is no structure there. You will damage if you go over the periosteum. You will damage the pleura. You can damage the other structures. The neurovascular bundle. So to, if you don't want to damage it, give a small incision in the periosteum and lift up the periosteum a little bit, and then introduce this around. And now you can see the rib. The usual motion is towards you. Spread it, spread it, spread it. So you'll create a 
you need only a small lick to enter then the periosteum is elevated that is why periosteum elevator is used periosteum elevator is used in orthopedics very regularly because the entire approach in orthopedics if you stay under the periosteum you don't need to do training in orthopedics there is nothing you can damage and it's not a surprise that there's still damage if you stay under the periosteum you will damage nothing if you actually there is nothing if i have to reach one end of the bone the other end of the bone i can reach by getting under the periosteum keep just lifting up the periosteum everything will go away remember therefore rib respiratory is nothing but a periosteum elevator for the rib and you should not cut a rib with periosteum on it why Uh, one answer I have given you because you will damage something which is what he is repeating. Second is? I have already said that all the vessels, pleura, they are outside the periosteum so they will not be damaged if you stay under the periosteum wo to jawab ho gaya na the other thing is the only sensitive part of the bone is periosteum it will cause pain periosteum is the only sensitive part osteomyelitis becomes acutely painful because periosteum is stretched bone is insensitive to pain if there is no periosteum you can cut the bone you can do whatever with it nothing else देखो यू आर पुटिंग स्टीनमेंट पेन ऑल्सो स्कैल फिल्ट्रेशन जो लगाते हैं स्किन में देते हैं इनफिल्ट्रेशन देन यू इन द पेरियास्टियम उसके अंदर जो बोन जब बोन के थ्रू जब ज्यादा होगा पेन भी नहीं होता फिर उधर निकलने वाला होता है फिर देते हैं लोकल और थोड़ी वाले नहीं मतलब जो नॉर्मल लोग हैं वो तो देते हैं दोनों तरफ और थोड़ी वाले कोई लोकल फोकल कुछ नहीं हो तो बट द आइडिया इज द सेम Periosteum should be anesthetized because that is going to hurt. Similarly, the abdomen, peritoneum should be. Pleura in the chest. These are places that are very very sensitive. The rib respiratory of the left side. Okay? Don't say rib respiratory of the left side. Say rib respiratory. If he is asking, then you get a chance to explain. Or I will just give you. This is. Periosteum elevator of a different kind, which is used for the same purpose. What is its name actually? Parabolus. Parabolus periosteum elevator. Parabolus. Huh? Parabolus. This is not parabolus. That's why I'm saying just call it periosteum elevator. It's a different one. That has a acute curve. Doesn't have it. Periosteum elevator. That's it. and this is for thumb to rest so it should be used with the thumb on it so that you are able to strip the periosteum clear and again the same reason you want to lift the periosteum before you cut the bone go get it right so go get it chalo bhai students bata बेसिकली mosquito medium and kelly or large the kelly is not just that one which you see in your emergency ot for putting the brains the long one or oh, that's the most common kelly kelly is the larger you must start okay now we'll take the description of only any one of them it is a medium sized artery forceps or hemostat Which has got rings at the back, 
more than one ratchet so that one only one is to be used box type of joint and transfer serrations which make it traumatic it's curved so it's a curved medium size hemostat or artery forceps or a clip they all mean the same clear use only one ratchet and try to enter just about into the ring don't go far so then it will be difficult to come out clear and the advantage of curvature is you should see what you are tying because you want to see the tip see what you tie and tie what you see that's the principle of surgery see what you tie and tie what you see and having more than one ratchet indicates that you want to use only one you use all of them tissue will be crushed and the instrument will be damaged also because then you will gradually lose that uh, you know the function of the ratchets the same description but a smaller size instrument it's called mosquito because of its size and uh, it's got same a couple of ratchets at the back transfer serrations box type of joint small and curved again you would like to see the tip therefore the curvature to open up or to release an artery forceps don't struggle to push it you have to use the principle of using the thumb and the ring finger thumb up ring down right if you if you do it the other method is by using the palm approach in the left hand or in the right hand in the left hand now your thumb down ring up these are the two approaches to open you don't need to struggle to crush the tissue and before you come out you've taken the tissue also out. that's not correct you will take one ratchet and then watch which side you are this is going to go the other way around so you would use the left hand it will automatically be thumb down ring up i've done thumb down and ring up okay if you want to palm it and do it you can do it the palm way also so mosquito medium clear same description except that it's a straight one the transfer serrations improve the grip but they are traumatic so there is increased trauma although the grip is better there are couple of ratchets there are rings at the back it's again medium sized but straight so it'll have a disadvantage of not being able showing you the tip while you're putting the suture tight curvature would have helped you So therefore, it is used on the surface. Where else you can use it? Suppose there is a small structure that you are going to cut, ligate and cut. You want to put the clamps. You can put straight ones so that there is space in between. Okay, you can put the curved ones also. But the disadvantage is, at one end it will be less, another end it will be more. There is a risk. So both being straight, you can put it, and it's easier to then. straight sorry curve and the size difference they both would qualify as medium this is mosquito on account of its size and the ratchets not more than one to be used at a time the fact that they are more than one and just about into the ring and uh, box joint rest all is similar approach in description rings at the back ratchets here again you know you would understand being more than one here also it indicates that longitude longevity is important because if you were to use otherwise there will be one only here like it's only one you can do with one also but after some time it will be loose so it's much better to have two three so that you can gradually keep on using it then you have something here which is important The serrations are crisscross, and there is a slit in the center. This is for the needle to sit in nicely. If the serrations are only transverse, the problem would be the axis, which is vertical, would be not neutralized, and that will have a disadvantage in the grip. The needle needs to sit somewhere comfortably, because if they are only transverse serrations, the needle is tending to go either way. So, with the crisscross serration, that won't happen, and with the slit, it will definitely not. that's where it is different because if i hold the needle with a straight artery forceps which you sometimes do in minor roti when you don't get the right kind of a needle holder 
the disadvantage you have is there is only one axis that you have. So it is not taking care of the turn, the rotation. So it is not a very good approach to have a, I mean therefore it is preferable to have crisscross relations. And if you can have slit also, that is ideal. So not, not all needle holders have slit. Some very small needle holders, especially in vascular surgery, they don't have a slit. Because it's too small to have a slit. But they have crisscross relations. Now this again, don't call it mixture, it will be wrong. Mixture is a different instrument. So just call it same description, rings at the back, sachets, ratchets not want to be used and the serrations are transferred so it is actually a hemostat with a curvature and at an angle that you can get it in an obtuse angle. If it is a little more acute it will be fitting into mixture but it will serve the purpose. It allows you to see the tip when you are passing through the from depth and you can feed a suture through it. You can also dis dissect with tip up. The advantage is you will be able to see the tip all the time which is necessary. And also when you are going along the cavity you will be able to see the tip. What is this instrument? If it is a Cali, nobody will kill you for that but it is not Cali. It is actually a clamp. You, it can also fit in into a cholecystectomy forceps and a clamp because it has got an eye if you notice. Very few people notice that so let us not get too much. It is for feeding the thread through after taking one transverse bite, you feed the thread through that, the short end. Not used for that purpose anymore. But this can be a cholecystectomy forceps. What is the advantage of cholecystectomy forceps over sponge holding when you are putting the galvan? Pressing the galvan on Yes, if you are holding the heart flex pouch which is what it is for, then the sponge holder will occupy the space in a broad sense, it will not give you space to work. And remember when you are doing open cholecystectomy, the intention is to have attraction down and out in the line of the cystic duct. So it will hold say like this and another one here, so this actually will be pulling in the axis, only in one axis. With that the whole space is occupied. So the basic the basic difference is the space it will occupy is less. If this is replaced by a sponge holder, imagine the broadness of here and you are able to not able to dissect in this place. So it is an advantage. Secondly, it can serve as a right angle that you see. Doubles up for both the functions. Some people use only cholecystectomy forceps, and they do what they hold the duct in this, and then they cut the gallbladder. Many people do that, and they tie. So they clamp and cut. So for that purpose also it's used. Primarily, vis-a-vis -a, -vis a sponge holder. Sponge holder, I don't know. Hmm. broader, that's it is. Is it clear? So it can double up as a, just mention it as a Kelly clamp or a cholecystectomy forceps or just a clamp. Just describe it and it's usually enough. But it's heavier or stouter than an ordinary Kelly. Kelly is thinner and, you know, sleeker. This is heavy. So it's used for, a, for holding the tough structure. Clear? The grip is solid. Like See if I was to hold it, this is the this is the heart pits pouch. A grip here, vertical in the axis. 
as the front right. If you hold it with a sponge holder, it has no axis. So you're getting my point. You can go further, farther on the ball bladder and yet pull it in this way. So that's it one. Something similar. Again a clamp. Why? Because you can see a slit in the center. And what is the purpose of the slit in the center? Slit actually converts it into two clamps, two grips at a short distance. It's a firmer grip. Isn't that very clever? You can see that showing it for his recording. He's recording it. There's a slit here. And this slit would make it into two. So it's a two in one clamp. It's vascular, or oh, it's a, it's, it, if it's a vascular thing which you're holding, a pedicle, wrong. Uh, this is basically for pneumonectomy or nephrectomy. You put it this way. Now, the same pedicle is being held at two places. It's a firmer grip. Now, what is the advantage? Why did I say it's a clamp? Watch the shaft. Watch it now. They ride over each other. So, you go inside like a stick now. You getting my point? Unlike this, which is broader. This is something you can get into this. Here, it's just a stick. And there is nothing in between. Sleeker goes inside and doubles up. Nothing goes anywhere now. It's like putting two clamps. Because after all, what is the difference between one and a two clamps? The blade, no? Baki to ap ginna thode ye. Blade to difference. The difference is that there are two blades. Two blades like this. Now, if you join the two artery forceps together, tie them together, they will still remain two. So, this back side is what is not ring significance, but here there are two of them. That is a smart way to achieve. Double the grip. So, stronger. And it is a pedicle clamp. This would be Kelly. No. Cockles, right? Now, this is a medium to large sized instrument with rings at the back and the ratchets which are more than one, same purpose transfer serrations and the tooth what is the purpose of truth? where was hold down cocker, where did you use it first time? appendix yeah appendix activity you mean it's a problem in the world? it's a this was used for thyroid surgery and the superior pedicle was held with this. When cocker started, this is the superior pedicle. Watch it. Now it can't slip away. If I put an artery, it can slip. Actually it did slip. Yeah, and even if I try it, not because there is a hook there. So he made it for the superior pole. And those days poles were to be ligated as one. There was no superior thyroid artery dissection that time. No Nias maneuver, no angle of joules, no joules triangle, no angle space of reefs. It's a bad ki baat now, This was the purpose of where he used it for the first time. Then you used it for crushing, you also used it for ARM. This is caucus clamp. 
Now we use it when we put that feeding tube across the feckless minor during level 3 dissection. We use it in the same way. It slip away. Otherwise, it will slip out of it. That's the purpose. Clear? This is caucus. Cocker means thyroid at first. That's what he did. Almost all his life. Now, similar, long curved Ellis forceps. Not wall cellum. We don't need wall cellum in surgery. Long curve. Alice forceps. Long curve, Alice forceps. And it's also used for holding tough structures, the upper cervical lip. Cervical is still that attack you. The advantage is you can hold it and pull it this way, so visibility is better. See the angle takes care of direction. But we are not using it as wall cellum, naturally not. But this is a long curve Alice Forceps. Used for holding tough structures, pulling them out. While you want to see the curve, the structures in the grip, that's advantage. Okay? And this is a classical Alice Forceps, which has got ratchets at the back, crushing teeth in front, and there is a space in between. It can be used for multiple purposes, holding tough structures, right, and also getting tubular structures in the space and lifting that up. And there is a box joint, the ratchets, depending on what you are using it for, has to be one. It is traumatic. Often confused with this, which is a bad cox. Tissue holding forceps. Alice tissue holding forceps. That's what tough structures like tendon, fascia, subcutaneous tissue, never skin, Babcock for soft structures, and also for lifting up tubular structures in that space. Was okay. Tubes. Same. Everything else is otherwise just the same. Box joint. They are ratchets, rings. And the other thing is the space here. If you notice, there is a space for the structure to expand. So you can take structure more than the size. Appendix. Isn't it? Babcock's to show it. This is sponge holding forceps with the ring, with the rings at the back, ratchets, which are more than one. Then the, you know, the interesting thing are the blades which are circular and they have transverse serrations. It is crushing, traumatic. The grip is good. Use for holdings, sponges, gallbladder. You can also hold cervix with this. Box joint. Clear? Sponge holding. Some people use this to hold structures that are going out of the body, like Neck dissection, a lot of people, when the cry started, earlier days surgeries, they used to make a small lick along the trapezius to cut the fascia. Right from the apex to the base of the posterior triangle. And then they lift it up and peel it off with the fascia. The entire thing would come out because they were not preserving excessively that way. And it will come off as one little envelope. Same thing in the axilla, some people do an envelope axillary dissection. They hold the whole fascia, cut it, lift the whole thing out. But then you don't preserve anything. You will go have them going through the envelope. This is sponge holding. This is tongue holding or lung holding. Tongue holding is not going to happen. Lung holding. Why? It is very fine serrations at the tip. And then what is the space for again the same thing? For the expansion. 
and also you can you know you must have seen Kalijan forces when you were in ophthalmology during your MBBS time. So Kalijan reach me leke so cart which serves as a clamp also. So many a times in the lung especially when you're doing thoracic surgery, there's a small little nodule you want to excise, get a nodule in the center, cut, remove it, and then you can put running sutures all around and put it. So it can be done. It's very, very useful instrument. But primarily lung holding forceps. But it doubles up as tongue holding forceps because in the tongue also if you take a biopsy, removing a tissue, get that in the center of it and with a sharp blade just cut around. No bleeding would happen. And then take running sutures. What is this? This is systole thought we first. How do you hold it? Same? Yes. Most people do it this way. Because initially, just this never It's the other thing like that. Let's hold it this way. It's the wrong way to hold it. The right way. And what should what should be the curvature direction? This is the foot end. It should go in like this. Feel the stone, grip it. Why is it important? Because with the curvature that side, removal is easier. I've used it in plenty of patients. That's how I know the difference. You're just theoretically appreciating it. I'm practically telling you there is a problem. If I go this way, I can't get the stone out. It goes this way. Close. You got that retractor in place or not in place is not a problem. And you feel, you get actually a sound. You sound the stone. Then it gets into this. And then you... I have seen initial cups with this. People are out of the bladder, but they're so anxious. It used to be one of the earlier surgeries of house surgeons and first year PDs. They're out of the bladder, then they throw the stone. Then the stone goes places. Then starts the real wild goose change. Change was systole thought it took only 20 minutes. The searching for the stone spent a life. And there are case reports of a lost stone being found. It used to happen. They won't be six rays to check out. They keep searching with the recesses, it disappears into. And you'll be very surprised that the recesses the body has inside. Stones just disappear. Therefore, the grip and the, the whole thing has to stay absolutely steady and it's possible to the curvature. Why do, why do I say sister the thought of me? These hooks, they hold a grip. Most of the times, the stone that is removed is oxalate stone. How does it differ in appearance from the phosphate stone? Oxalate is mulberry. Oxalate is the mulberry stone. And that's why it is detected early. That's why the prognosis is better. The immature early. Phosphate presents when kidney is gone. It produces hydronephrosis and then you come. Oxalate, strangury, hematuria, irregular surface, pain, they come early. And that oxalate, those, uh, that mulberry fits into this, that's why. Click on, there's Jardins. Double thought we process and now cut it. This is wrong. I'm sure now this is an instrument without any ratchets, with no box. With a curvature which can never get into CBD. With blades which are 
which have got serrations, which is never used for a CBD stone. It's a nephrolithotomy or a pyelolithotomy concepts. These are the basic differences. Disjardins, now listen to me carefully, don't keep noting it down. Disjardins would be the same instrument straightened further with no serrations here. The CBD stone is very soft, it will get crushed. And you, you can, it's a big CBD. How do you go forward? That whole thing is straight, it goes in. It's almost straight, almost straight, like this. Isko iske roop mein dekhi. Try to see with this curvature. That is discharging. This is nephrolithotomy or pyelolithotomy. And what? There are three angles. Watch it. This is acute. It is an almost 90. It is an obtuse. And there is a straight one. The lower calyx, middle calyx, you can remove this. Also the lower calyx. With the kidney in your hand, right side. I'll be entering like this and sounding the stone, holding it. This is for pyelolithotomy. This is not discharging. Clear? Bone nibble. Bone nibble. Bone nibble. Who's bone? Nibble gets a You put a name in the red, dumb nickel red. Nibble to the carrier, you put a bag. It's so heavy. Remember, bone nibbler has to have a lever, which it doesn't have. Lever which functions in nibble. And it shouldn't have those cups. But bone nibbler is there to be seen. I can show you if it is there. This is a this is a bigger the bone cutter. There is a ring like this. Sorry, there is a spring like this, which functions for nibbling. Nibbling is a bone but you say up near hats are nibble. This is a bone holder for larger bones. You reduce fractures by not holding the bone in your hand. Watch it. This is femur, lower end. This is upper end. This is deformed. Similar instrument here. Then they are brought together. Done. Now, Bhavani will hammer with the K-nail. From there, I'll keep on holding. And both the orthopedic surgeons will be jerking all the time. Daga, daga, daga. That's all they do. <laughs> and when it goes through the fracture onto the other side, I will know because this will start shaking more now. And then roughly we'll decide, both of us, now enough. And that bone is covered. And that's the purpose of a bone holder. It is help, it is helpful in reducing the fracture while it is being fixed, that's the correct answer. And it is not a bone hair, uh, nibbler. You cannot nibble a thing with this. For nibbling, you need a lot of punch in the instrument. So again, you need This is a bone cutter, which has got double lever. Watch it. One here, one here, see. This is what generates that power here, not you. You can't cut a bone with your hand, nobody can. You can't nibble it also. That is for grip only, but the whole power is of the lever that you are using. So this is, this is a bone cutter. And there is one mallet's bone hammer, it used to be here, I think they removed it. Chali, you have it. This was uh, uh, there, but we did not take it early because you should. You can confuse it with the skin. Oak, it is not. 
single look retractor it is not it is actually with a eye here so it's an aneurysm needle but you can pass any thread through even cystic duct around cystic duct also this is basically used in aneurysm because it will occupy less space i use a right angle even here mixture because i find that easier but there are sharper ones and smaller ones now so we can do that but this can be used for passing thread around the superior pole of thyroid artery also you also i mean superior thyroid artery also it can be used for anywhere where you can pass the thread but its name is aneurysm needle and it has a grip which you can use for dissecting and negotiating the thread clear this is back or sound clip this other one is mayos which is not here which one is this lane lane tissue. tissue holding force which is very similar to a towel clip also to shorter again it has you know the only thing it has is sharp tooth which digs into the tissue so it is a tissue that is going out of the body you don't hold anything with this which is staying in and it is space for expansion ratchets at the back holding tough tissue which is going out this is an instrument with which is spring loaded where is the spring loaded here spring loaded has an advantage you know it has a memory which means it will go back into the position from where it came so it can be allowed to expand into tissues also and the grip is the fenestrations which are on the blade and the classical hook grip is between the index finger and the thumb resting on the middle finger and to make it function i have to make the spring function when i leave it it goes back to its position so it has a memory that is what is needed the tooth makes it a better grip a traumatic better grip everything similar no teeth makes it less traumatic but less grip also the grip is also weaker now the, this one with the one with the with the tooth is used for holding tough structures skin fascia this is used for holding soft structures clear plain and to the purpose no confusion about it this is an instrument with rings at the back no ratchets and box joint or a screw joint it's a screw joint and the fulcrum being close to the tip makes it a surgical scissors if the fulcrum was in the center it will be a tailor scissor जितना फलक्रम टिप के पास आएगा उतना फाइन कट इसको अगर आपको इंप्रूव करना है एज एन इंस्ट्रूमेंट टेक द फलक्रम फर्दर आप द क्लोज ऑफ द फलक्रम इज टू द टिप बेटर द कट फाइनर द कट बट द ओनली प्रॉब्लम ऑफ दिस इंस्ट्रूमेंट इज इट इज स्ट्रेट सो यू कैन नॉट सी द टिप ऑल द टाइम सो वी मेड इट कर्व व्हिच अलाउज द टिप टू लुक एट यू ऑल द टाइम सो टिप अप और टिप टुवर्ड्स यू दैट्स हाउ सीजर्स मस्ट बी यूज्ड and also you can use it for dissection tip up approach therefore it's called a dissecting scissors remember cut what you see and see what you cut tie what you see see what you tie that is why curvature is necessary most complications in surgery are because of not following this principle see what you cut cut what you see tie what you see and see what you tie to baki samasya apne aap theek ho jayegi अच्छा तो बता ना यही ये तो कुछ और निकला तो पता नहीं था क्या कर एंड ब्रॉड द ब्लेड मोर द सेक्टिंग वैल्यू सो इफ यू हैव टू मेक इट दिस इज एक्चुअली मेयो सीजर्स बट डोंट गेट टू मच इन्वॉल्व इन टू इट द ब्रॉड ब्लेड एंड हैवियर वन इज द मेयो सीजर्स बट जस्ट रिमेंबर स्ट्रेट एंड कर्व एंड द डिफरेंस बिटवीन अ सीजर्स ऑफ अ टेलर एंड दैट ऑफ अ सर्जन एंड कर्वेचर See what you cut. Cut what you see. Okay. This is the clamp, which has got same thing. Ratchets at the back. More than one means you got to use only one. The blades have serrations which are horizontal. 
which makes it relatively less traumatic. But the grip is also poor and you can also see some daylight through it. So it is relatively less traumatic. Don't call it eight traumatic, less traumatic. So it's a bowel clamp. Don't use this. Use one. Especially in the surgery in emergency, bowel is the dimitus. Use only one. It will be okay. Otherwise, ischemia would happen. The longitudinal serrations allow you for it to hold, but it's not as good a grip. You must have seen bowel slipping away from the clamp very frequently. And many people use vascular clamp for bowel anastomosis to hold the bowel. And I found that is more traumatic, the ones that we have. So, the best, I have made them do sometimes the fingers to hold with the fingers. That's the best, the least traumatic. Otherwise, everything is possible. So, just like this, another clamp is uh, curved. This is straight. So, curved bowel clamp. Is there any basic difference? The basic difference is curvature would allow you to take the depth, especially when you are doing a resection, say from the rectum, you put a curved clamp and you cut like this, so you would able to take the bites better, one. It allows you space for taking a bite, two. Number three, especially in the mesentery, sometimes when you are taking the bowel in a particular manner, it helps to have a curvature. Curvature everywhere in surgery has an advantage that it allows you to see. Oh, it's a straight and curved. And sometimes to differentiate between which one is going, which one is staying, you put one straight, one curved. Same thing is applicable into hemorrhoidectomy. Skin, some people hold with the, not skin, the inner part of skin, with the straight and the other with the curve. So you always know the straight, the curved space. But primarily the clamp, straight is used, say, in gastrectomy. Curve is used in bowel anastomosis because it allows you space for working. You have to anastomose with the clamp in place. What is this? Suction cannula. Don't give it any other name. It has an opening. Yeah. Yeah, I can see. What is this opening for? You increase the negative. Not that it will not function. If you press it, it will function further better. Humby skin grafting knife, they will ask you what are the types of skin graft. Split thickness skin graft, where you just take epidermis and part of dermis. Full thickness, you take epidermis and dermis, both. Full thickness has the advantage of strength and pigments. So it will cosmetically be good and it will be stronger. You have to put on the fascia, tendon, whatever, bone. The disadvantage is poor take up and you can't get a lot of it. Split thickness advantage, good take up, you can get as much as you want. Disadvantage, no strength and no pigment. And here you said Chalam or Dina. है ना वो टेढ़ा तेरा लगा चार पांच बारी कोचिंग की हुआ है ये ठीक है किया कैसे है लक्ष्य तो इसके बाद सबसे पहले पंद्रह साल पहले करी फिर ऐड कलेक्ट की थी उसको सर इतने सदस्य को मौका देके दिखाने के लिए है ना दो बार आ गए हैं उसमें क्या Genus veris needle with a spring. The spring ensures that when you are entering, you don't trauma traumatize. Huh? And the classical way to hold it is when people hold differently, no? Should you hold it here or you hold it here? And angle, you create a, the angle with the medial side of the palm on the abdomen, okay? Then, how many times you have to take a, you have to go through the abdominal wall? Twice. Even if it is just below the umbilicus, it goes twice. It's halfway between umbilicus and 
to fix in prices that there is no posterior sheath. Otherwise, there is sheath. Although just close to a black as it is merging. But you should break the resistance twice. The check for negativity by putting some saline drops which get sucked in and connecting it for negative pressure in the monitor. This is not a good thing, I think it is simple. Open trocar is preferred so that you don't enter anywhere blindly. As in trocar, बंद करने क्या? चक्कन्ना राजकुमार वो कई बारी इसी के लिए वो तमाशा करते रहेंगे। प्रोका, ग्रिप, इट इस स्टॉप बाय पाम, द ग्रिप, एंड रोटेटिंग। व्हाट इज़ दिस? शीट, हैं? तू यहाँ सराय सबसे आए थे दरबार में जब तो पुरानी वाली सीज़र था ना पहले जो कोर्स टेक में यूज़ करते थे टेस्ट प्ले मुझे याद है ना पुरानी प्ले है ना ये ना लैपरोस्कोपिक एंडोसिन Book. ये खराब तो मैं देखो क्या था ये Any questions? Instruments are over. Anything you want to ask from this? Suction rate. Now, now, the product is jaldi ne time. What is it? It's Bhavani. Now, there is a line here, which is a radio pick line for you to find it on x-rays, which is important. And it also goes along the eyes. So, you can actually see the last eyes inside. Which is so important to see, right? If it comes out, you will know with the X-ray. That's true of all of them. Just to police indwelling catheter. What is this, Gopal? Now, what is this for? What is this for? What are these wings for? By strapping or suturing? This is for suture, that's why it is there. For suturing through this, one skin, one skin. Or you can also put a tape around and tie it, but that is usually for the metallic one. And this is to inflate. How much is the inflation you need to do? Standard hand, nothing much here. The current is the AI card. Is the I think this is usual. The sutures there. Careful. What is it? What is reverse cutting? How does it help? What is the purpose of reverse cutting? Are it? 
Reverse cutting for vascular. Mm-hmm. Don't use cutting for vascular. Firstly, reverse cutting is with the cut that happens inside, so that you can go wider without going wide. You see, when you are taking a bite, the usual appearance of a needle is the sharp is outside, so you keep going farther. If the sharp is inside, then you go. You are able to take the thread beyond because you are cutting inside. So you take a wider margin without losing the tissue. That is the purpose. Padoos ko. Not discussing theory of it. And no vascular sutures are cutting. Vessel doesn't need it. Reverse cutting is used when you are trying to get. You are you are putting it close, but you want the width also at the same time. And how how wide should be the bite? Twice the depth of any wound. Why kill is a monofilament or polyfilament? Polyfilament. Polyfilament. Look. Hmm. Up. Cut. Oh. It's a virtual monofilament. That's the best way to remember. Right and cut. How does it become a virtual monofilament? Yes, it's covered in a sheet, so it becomes a monofilament. It's virtual. It's a virtual monofilament. So polyfilament right, monofilament also right. So beach ki baat. Virtual monofilament. Silk is not absorbable natural suture. Synthetic non-absorbent would be nylon, which is New York, London, which is the uh, first non-absorbent suture that was used. After that, there are derivatives of New York, London. New York, London suture came into use during Second World War, and the supply to US stopped from Europe. So they created Allied forces. They created their own suture, which is mono, which is a nylon. Nylon doesn't disappear ever. It will remain even after nuclear holocaust. That's what he said. Which is good and bad because the problem is it stays in the body forever, but doesn't have the tensile strength. So why do you need it? Proline has a tensile strength for a longer time. It also doesn't go anywhere. So then came proline. But even proline is not good. The best suture is the ideal suture should be absorbable. It should be monofilament. It should cause minimal tissue reaction. It should be. Car antibacterial, and it should be cheap at the end. That's very difficult to get. This is Moynihan's, Sir Moynihan's definition of ideal suture. So whichever is closest to it, so PDS, polydaxon, that is absorbable with a tensile strength of up to six weeks, six to eight weeks. Why kill is three weeks? So if anybody is closing rectus sheath with vicryl, he should be hanged with vicryl actually. So that the death is also slow. Single string. Vicryl cannot be used for closing rectus sheath. Gynecologists use it very cheaply. That's why I'm giving the exam. And gynecologists are taught this. I take their courses and I have to tell them specifically vicryl rectus sheath no. तो अक्सर यूज़ करते हैं तो चलता है ना तो यूज़ करते हैं मैं आपको थोड़े आता है इनसे जनानियाँ मोनोफिलामेंट सूचन इज़ आइडियल एब्सोर्बेबल बट विद अ टेंसाइल स्ट्रेंथ फॉर द टिश्यू तो व्हेन यू आर यूजिंग अ सूचन यू हैव टू टेक इनटू अकाउंट थ्री थिंग्स व्हाट इज़ द टेंसाइल स्ट्रेंथ � Am I right? How long does it take for rectus sheet to heal? Six to eight weeks. So, आप ऐसी गलती कर रहे हैं पहले। Don't use wrong switches in wrong place. Now onwards, you'll be registrar. All of you move on in life. Don't don't use rectus sheet closure with white cloth. Don't use any absorbable switcher for any 
tough structure. It doesn't work. For skin, you don't need it for more than seven days. So you use simple suture, silk, or whatever. You can even use Vital Plus, which will be disappearing, absorbed in seven days. Because you need it for that long. So it is not decided by your will. It is decided by the tissue's will. Take that into account. So absorbable, non-absorbable. Synthetic, non-synthetic. And then ideal suture in the center. Ideal suture is monofilament, least reactive, cheap, and absorb. Presently, is there any ideal suture existing? The answer is no. The closest to ideal suture is PDS. Okay, any questions? Any questions from anything? Have you seen that patient today? See a breast? What did you find? Diagnosis. So there were three patients. Uh, one uh, had this. Four corner patient. Uh, so inflammatory. So inflammatory breast carcinoma left side with the lymphedema of the left upper. So I could not examine the axilla. Can you examine the axilla in these patients? Can you examine the breast in these patients? Was there any lump felt? No, sir. Why do you call it inflammatory breast carcinoma? Sir, edema, induration, and edema involving more than three fourths of the breast without any. Fifty percent. Occurring in less than three months, three four months. Three months. The duration is very important, which is what confuses to be prevented. The short galloping course with the rhythm all over the breast, no lump palpable. What is the cause of Podiaranch? Not a rhythm of you got me wrong actually. Rhythm of Podiaranch occupying more than three fourths of the breast. Inflammation like picture. What is the cause of Podiaranj in these patients? What actually is the this disease? Inflammatory breast cancer. It's a separate disease which was described by Lee and Tenenbaum in 1920. They described that this is not breast cancer of its normal type. Here, it's very early the tumor thrombi go and block the lymphatics and they spread it all over. So, Podiaranj which happens in the patch in carcinoma breast, it occurs all over the surface. And it is differentiated from inflammation in locally advanced breast carcinoma by the test, three fourth less than three fourth. But there will be a history of a lump, LABC, and then inflammation happening. Classically, in inflammation is a LABC. But in inflammatory breast carcinoma, there is no such time. It happens very quickly. And lymph nodes are invading the blood. If there was a patient with just a lump in this case, let me kill, yes. and the edema of the upper limb. What would be the diagnosis? So, blockage of the lymphatic that is causing the. What would be the state? Uh, so, sensitivity N2. So, N2 is implied if you have fixed axillary nodes fixed to each other or to axilla, or no nodes but there is lymphedema. Because that means the same thing. Lymphedema can only happen if they are fixed to the axillary vein. So, this implies already a late disease. We have admitted her for core needle biopsy. She will be back on Monday for exam. They are always managed by new actual chemotherapy first. Upfront surgery is not done. So if skin is fixed to the lip, but there is no signs of skin involvement, like the skin is fixed, it is fixed. For the orange is the fixity of skin only. Yeah. If the skin is fixed to the lung, it is 3-4-B. Yeah. 